guys, it's Tori from Fox and Hazel, and I am really excited to be bringing you guys this tutorial as part of a really fun blog hop with Stencil Girl and Tim Holtz. And so I'm gonna be using um, the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons for this entire project. And we're gonna be making a fun little note card set with some spirit animals. And so um, before I started filming this, what I did was I cut myself two note cards out of some watercolor paper, just some cheap stuff. You don't have to use anything really nice, even like mixed media paper, just something that's like a heavier paper that will hold up to paint being on it. And then what I did was I used a credit card um, to scrape or like spread a really thin layer of gesso on the front side of my card. So what I'll be doing first is using several of the colors to create a background for my uh, note cards. And the first color I'm using here is Worn Lipstick. It's this really nice shade of pink. And um, previous to this um, blog hop, I've actually never used Distress Crayons. <laughs> they were new to me. I know that they're widely used in the art journaling and mixed media community. I've just never, I guess, never thought to use them or look into them. And so um, you'll see in the video that I'm still trying to get the hang of how they work. Um, I tried using it with water, as you can see, and it really watered down the color like a lot. And it was too watery, too watery for me. And so I found out that the best method is to just dip my finger in like my water and have it just like my fingertips damp. Um, I find that they, the crayons didn't want to move as much with just my bare fingertip. Like if the paper started absorbing it really quick, you didn't have a lot of play time. And maybe if I had applied more at once, it would have, but I guess I, I guess I didn't really feel like I wanted to add that much uh, of the Distress Crayon all at once. So anyways, so the colors I'm using here is the Worn Lipstick and um, the yellow is Fossilized Amber and then this is Crushed Olive. The yellow is not this neon. I don't know why my camera picked it up like this, but it's more of like a mustard yellow, um, hence the Fossilized Amber. It, that's accurate in the name, so I'm not sure why my camera did this. So anyways, so all I'm doing is I'm just going back over the areas I've already done to try and intensify the color. So I had previously applied that pink and then used water and it made it really faint and watered it down a bunch. So all I'm going to do I guess, for the next minute or two, I guess, well, more than that probably, is I'm just layering my colors on. I'm trying to get a feel for like where I want my colors and, you know, making sure it's as intense as I want it to be in different areas. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just like basically finger painting, right? <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> uh, I really like them though. These Distress Crayons are kind of cool. Um, I've used other water soluble mediums before. Like I love watercolors and I use um, the Neo colors, um, like water soluble wax crayons. And I love Stabilo All pencils and stuff. So having another water soluble medium was kind of fun to play around with. So I'm just gonna keep adding more color, it looks like. This is one of those things, I guess, like I've, because I've never used them before, I wasn't sure how much I would need, and I find that um, they work best if you do a layer, let them dry, and then do another layer and let it dry and sort of build up the, the color on here, and then you get this sort of distressed, haha, <laughs> look, um, and you get the vibrancy that I want. And so, oh, this one is another color, it's frayed burlap. So it's sort of a beigey kind of color. It has a little bit more of a green undertone to it. So yeah, I feel like this part is really boring because it's just me endlessly smearing distress crayons around my page. Oh, here we go. Now I'm gonna get interesting. So this is the cool part. I'm sure people who have used Tim Holtz products know this, but like this was all new to me. Was I really liked that you could, if it was a sealed surface, that you could splash water on it and then remove the material or medium I guess and so I'm just flicking a bunch of water on here and then letting it sit for like a minute or two and then um, I'm gonna lay down my uh, paper towel on top to soak up everything and then you get this really cool paint splatter effect like reverse I thought it was really cool I've never had a medium that worked like that before and so I mean I'm just using um, the abandoned coral to kind of add a little bit more of that pink in the corners and what am I gonna do next 
Oh, um, and so because you can remove the paint once it's been on a sealed surface, I'm taking this stencil by Roxanne Cobble. This is her Rabbit Bunny stencil, and I'm using a baby wipe, and I am wiping away the paint from, or the Distress Crayon, sorry, from the area, and it's gonna relieve like a negative image. And this is really cool because I've never been able to do this with, with any other materials that I use. And so I really liked it. I thought it looked pretty cool. Instead of having to, you know, paint and then use white gesso and then hope that nothing bleeds through or shows through the layers of gesso or whatever. It's kind of fun. So I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. And, you know, and so then um, the next note card here, instead of doing a vertical orientation, I'm doing a horizontal orientation. And again, I'm just starting with my colors. Um, this is the worn lipstick. I'm going back in with just a tiny bit of water on my fingertips to try and get it to move around the card. Um, you can see that like I've learned my, <laughs> I've improved from the first card to now. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. And so the other colors in you here that I'm using is um, peacock feathers and tumbled glass. The uh, peacock feathers are really nice teal and tumbled glass is like a nice light kind of, yeah, like tumbled glass is a great description because it really makes me think of like clear blue glass. Good job, Tim Holtz, on naming all your colors accurately. <laughs> and so, yeah, and I like this color too because um, my colors that I gravitate towards are teals and turquoises and mints and stuff like that. Those are the colors that I seem to be drawn to. And so now I'm just going in with another color. I believe this one was um, pumice stone. So it's sort of like a, a neutral gray, lighter neutral gray that I'm just, again, I think I spoke. Oh, <laughs> I just realized this is the part I didn't think you guys want to see it again. So I sped this up like crazy, crazy fast. Like I think we're at like four times speed or something like that. I promise I can't smear crayon that fast. I wish, right? So both these cards are the same technique or the same process, but I wanted to show how you could use the same process just with different colors and different stencils and you could make cards that were different but went together that were part of a cohesive set and so you could uh, you could make like four or six or however many of these and gift them as a set if you wanted or you could keep them for yourselves and give them away on occasions if you will and yeah like I I kind of like processes that way I guess like I forever I'm making cards and stashing them for everything and I'm really enjoying the uh, I guess the flexibility of the crayons and the fact that I like that you could fix it in some ways easier than paint like I could the fact that I can splatter the water and then remove it and then if I didn't like it I could you know color back over top of it and cover it all up and then do it all over again it's a little bit more forgiving than if you went in with like white acrylic paint because then it's game over it's there and you could paint over it a million times but it might still be there <laughs> so um, what I'm using next is uh, Roxanne, Roxanne sorry Cobles um, wool stencil stencil oh my gosh what is wrong with my mouth right now <laughs> um, Roxanne Cobles wolf stencil oh my gosh and some modeling paste um, if you've never used modeling paste before it's uh, it's similar to like drywall putty I guess is the best description it's like a a paste that um, you put it on smooth and it dries hard and so I'm just pushing it through the stencil and these videos always make it seem like everybody can put modeling paste on in like a hot minute you're like 10 seconds later done but in real life it's like you're messing around with it for like five minutes while you're trying to smear it on all nice and smooth and then if you're like me you have a dirty palette knife and you get a big smear in the middle of it <laughs> so anyways you're gonna smear the modeling paste through your stencil and then as you can see it leaves a really cool um, raised stencil of the wolf which is really nice and then um, um, I believe the next thing I do oh oh yes sorry so this stencil here is um, uh, I think it's Killam Patterns by Kathy Nichols on Stencil Girl or by Stencil Girl and so I'm just using um, some of the different patterns and again I'm going back in with the baby wipe and I'm wiping away the paint and when I did my test card um, I actually did this step before I um, put the wolf on with modeling paste which is what I recommend I don't know I kind of got distracted I guess and forgot and then realized I didn't do this step and so 
if you're smart, watch the video first <laughs> and then do this. And so um, go through and wipe off the stencil pattern that you want first and then go through and then do the modeling paste because as you can see my stencil kind of stuck but it kind of did leave a cool texture it kind of made it like i don't know it was kind of wolfy i guess it like stuck and peeled away i'm gonna lift up and show you it's kind of that really like lots of ridges and ripples so that's kind of cool but you should probably do the stencil first or the pattern first before you do the wolf so here i am going back on the other card um, i'm going to take that same rabid bunny stencil and i'm going to use modeling paste to um leave I don't know stencil with modeling paste the skeleton and like intestines and the internal anatomy that's on that same stencil over top of my um, negative image that I wiped away and this is really cool I've done this a couple times in a few different spreads and here I did it with like white on white um, one of my other spreads that I've done I think if you follow me on Instagram I'm Fox and Hazel on Instagram I shared it where I stenciled a black outline hence why the black on my stencil and then did this step with the white modeling paste and it's super high contrast and spooky and I love it so if you have a stencil give it a try so you can see so what I did was I ran off to where my heat gun is and dried them and I think I've mentioned it before in other videos my heat gun is in my bathroom in my bedroom because I have kids who nap and the like and I do a lot of this while they're sleeping so I go scurry off to my bathroom and I realized that I forgot that I'd wanted to stencil this eye from the wolf stencil set. And so I'm just, again, stenciling that with some more modeling paste. And I think I ran off and dried that again. So um, another cool, oh, no, never mind. I thought I was gonna do something different, but here I am. I've grabbed that same Killam pattern stencil and I'm gonna use my white gel pen to trace this pad or design this shape from this stencil onto my card <clears throat> and then you, what you'll get to see for the next however many minutes is me fighting with a white gel pen i think i like this gel pen works great these are the uniball signo broad pens and i love them i think they don't really want to play friendly with the um the distress crayons because they almost have a like a waxy texture to them even when they're dry not very waxy but enough that it's like that ink just did not want to roll onto it so instead of doing that I grabbed my um, I think it's the my Posca white paint pen but then I go to the bottom here again and fight with my white gel pen again I don't know I was insistent on using this thing and it was like every time I went to go use it I forgot that two minutes ago it didn't work and then I would grab my white gel, my white paint pen and go back I don't know do you ever do that is anyone else like that where it's like you insist on using this art supply even though you know it's not working somehow you find yourself using it again see here I am again I'll be like oh no oh yeah it doesn't work all oh, right Tori you just tried this two minutes ago <sighs> whatever so <laughs> I took my white paint pen and just scribbled in the pattern I had uh, traced on there it's a little hard to see just because it's so light um, but I'll hold it up and you guys can I don't know if I hold it up now, but I'll hold it up and you can see it a little bit better. And I find that the white acrylic paint pens were fine with the Distress Crayons. They wanted to play friendly. And so, um, because these are water soluble, I actually found a really cool way to use them is instead of putting them on the paper, was I grabbed an old gift card and um, scribbled some of the Distress Crayon on there and then used it like a watercolor paint. And so um, I've got a really fine tip I think this is like a zero round or one round uh, watercolor brush and I'm painting on top of that modeling paste that I had previously put on um, with some distress crayon and this is the black soot and yeah I fast forwarded it because it's boring to watch but that's the final effect and so it's cool it's like watercolor and it's so it's like the inverse of having a black background with um, white bones it's a white background with black bones really cool and so now I'm using actually a distress marker the fine tip end and just doodling around the outline of my little bunny here I kind of like how these cards came out a little bit like spooky I guess like I wanted them to be light and airy but I also love having a little bit of a spooky edge to some of the stuff that I make I love using black in all my work if you're afraid of using black in your work I know there's tons of people who are art journalers who like using black terrifies them this is a really good segue into it 
you're not sure, you don't know, I suggest using it like a little bit at a time as you are making your pages. It's easy to get afraid of it if you put like a lot of black on at once, but if you start using like pens and markers or like, you know, watercolors, just a bit at a time, then you'll find your pages really seem to pop a lot more. Like, I think a lot of people struggle with the idea that black is like intimidating, but the more black and white you use in a page, the higher the contrast is in your page. And those are the pages that come out really striking and really bold and really, you know, powerful are ones that you embrace the contrast. And so I super recommend that you give black a try. And so I've gone back again with this um, distress crayon that I've covered or sorry, colored on the on the sorry my brain's not working on the gift card and again I'm using it like a watercolor I'm, I'm just adding some dots to add a bit more visual interest and texture this is also a really great way to introduce black into your art journaling pages if you're afraid of doing so so yeah and this one oh that's what I do you think I have no idea what's going on it's not like I made this myself um, so I'm just taking my Posca paint pen and I am writing the words, oh hey, on friend, because I'm so cool and casual. Like I didn't just make you this card and write in it for you or anything. <laughs> so I had done that with the paint pen originally and I didn't, it didn't show up as uh, striking as I had hoped. And so I went back over with my um, distress marker so that it would show up. And this bad boy is done. That's it. So yeah. It's a really like, I don't know, I think it's easy. Um, it's just like, I guess a lot of steps. That's why this tutorial seems like it's going on forever. Also, cause I'm doing two cards at once. <laughs> so the next card, um, so what you can see here is that when the uh, modeling paste dried, it was because I had accidentally put this, the other stencil on top of it, it had too many high ridges on it that I was worried about the way the distress crayons were gonna sit in it. And so I'm gonna go in with the Hickory Smoke here and I did struggle with a little bit only because it was too textured. Um, I ended up having to use a watercolor brush rather than my fingers for this just because there were so many ridges and nooks and crannies that it was hard to get all the uh, color in there. So if you end up doing this with your modeling paste too, then just grab a brush and kind of work with it and play with it. So I did that. I saved you guys watching me like 10 minutes of this. But what I did was I used um, the hickory smoke, the black soot, and then I believe the blue was ooh, chipped sapphire. I may have gotten that wrong. Everything will be in the description box below so you can see which ones I'm using and also get them for yourself if you'd like. Um, and then I'm just, I worked it over until I was happy with all the different colors on there. I wanted the wolf to be darker than my background. It's funny when I'm filming a lot of my art journaling tutorials that I share on here is that I'm always re really mindful of the time, how long they are. And I always feel like my pages are never quite as detailed as I'd like them to be. But I also realize it's because I don't want to make like a 30 minute video. So um, this one, I guess anyone who's a YouTuber, I guess, if you have any tips out there, um, I love sharing my process with you guys. I would love to show more detailed pages. If that's something you're into, if you think you would like longer videos that are more detailed like this page, let me know in the comments below. Um, most of my pages are quite a bit more involved than the ones I typically share on my YouTube channel. Um, and if you think that's something that you're into, let me know. I would love to hear from you. So um, what I did around the wolf there was I just went in with a distress marker and then used a paintbrush to um, add some depth to the edges of my wolf hair and then what I'm doing now is I'm going back over just with the, the distress crayons ugh, tongue tied over top of that eye image I used the crushed olive and then I used the black soot and then I am just I grabbed some more water and did some splatters all over top of the card I was trying to pull it off of the wolf um, and I think it worked on some parts of it um, in the test when I done it worked way better but I think what happened here was that because that modeling paste was so textured and so many ridges to it that it didn't want to pick it up like it was too hard it was too far in there for it to just sit and come up so I tried it with a watercolor brush kind of worked kind of didn't I moved on say la vie I could sit and fight with it forever but whatever it looked good enough and so now I'm just using my um, distress marker to go back in and add a little bit of detail in just the, um, that sort of arrow type 
pattern in the background that I had wiped away. And I believe, yes, and then I'm adding detail to the eye. So I'm using that same distress marker, just like I said, to add some detail. Um, if you ever see original pages that you like really love, a lot of times it's because someone has spent the time to put a lot of detail into it. Um, my husband and I were talking about this the other day actually about how like my personal improvement from two and a half years ago from when I started art journaling to now, it, I believe that the reason why it's gotten so much better is because I am spending more time adding more detail to more of my pages instead of sort of like rushing through it or like trying to just be done with it I feel more invested in trying to create the exact not the exact but like the more emulate what I really want I guess out of a page I also don't feel like I'm trying to emulate someone else's anymore I'm really comfortable in my own style and so I like adding a lot of detail to my work I know it's not for everyone, but I find that pages that really interest me and others usually are ones that people have spent the time adding detail to. So if you find like your pages are lacking, I recommend that you just sit with it a bit longer and try to add more, not like an insane amount more, but just see how there's ways that you could add more visual interest to your page if it doesn't seem like it has quite enough. So um, what I did here was I took my white Posca paint pen and I added detail to my wolf. It gave her a little eye and a definition in the ear and some paws and then wrote the word hello. And now I am just using my watercolor brush with um, the, I believe it's chipped sapphire and just adding some more um, pattern and texture just to kind of add to that sort of grungy feel that I'm going for. And well, it's time for some paint splatters. I never paint splatter anymore. I got really excited about this. I never seem to do them anymore on my pages. I think because I make a mess usually when I do it and I'm like so paranoid that I'm gonna get it all over my office, my desk and stuff. And so anyways, I was really excited that I did it. <laughs> in fact, I was so excited that I did it that I decided to go back to the rabbit card and add some more paint splatters to that. Because who doesn't love paint splatters on everything? Am I right? I'm right. Um, I believe in this one though, I used Hickory Smoke because this card had a, um, less black and had more of sort of a gray vibe going on. And I already had those black dots. I didn't want the paint splatters to take away from it too much. So yeah, I think that after this I'm done. I think that's the end of it. Let's see, it is, yeah, so that's it guys. So this is like a really fun way to make a note card set and um, kind of get like sort of the, I said like spirit animals because to me when I did it, it felt very tribal and like spiritual and a little bit grungy and mystical. I will have links to everything I used um, in this video in the description box below. And I want to say a big thanks to Tim Holtz and Stencil Girl. This was a super fun um, blog hop. Um, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can always get an update when I have new videos. And if you're on Instagram, find me at Fox and Hazel because I love posting there and I love seeing what everybody else is making. Um, also, let me know if you guys are into more detailed, longer videos. Please leave a comment if you're yay or nay. All right. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time. Bye.